Hello, everyone. My guest today is Michael Jensen. He's an entrepreneur and co-founder of Solo SEO, the leading provider of DIY website marketing and SEO tools. He lives in Washington State and enjoys racing and being adventurous with his kids. In fact, he just came in. Michael, you told me from sledding. Are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, for sure. All right. So what did you guys get a big snowstorm yesterday? Well, big is relative, but here in Washington, we get any snow, we try to make the most of it. So I love we, that. We love actually that. went to try to find a sled hill and there wasn't none, there wasn't much left. So we just threw snowballs. It was fun. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Tell us about solo SEO. What's it doing? How do you make money? So solo SEO is a set of do it yourself SEO tools. And, uh, uh, we we work directly with customers and we also um, partner with hosting companies. And so hosting companies uh, will uh, sell uh, resell our um, our tools as part of the packages that they sell with their hosting. Um, and then we work with uh, customers directly too. that anyone with a website basically that wants to rank higher in the search engines. So we, we provide a bunch of tools that help them to do that. And what are people paying you on average per month, would you say? Uh, so the plans start from anywhere from uh, $19 a month to up to $99 a month for our, our pro package. So what do you yep. think a fair average is, like 20 30 bucks? Yeah, yeah, about then. Somewhere in there, okay. And give me the backstory. When did you launch the company? So um, this goes back to really 2005. Um, my business partner, Aaron Stewart, and I, we, we had tried out a few different online companies um, and done a few things together, just you know, seeing what would work. And we had a real problem getting a lot of traffic, you know, as anyone. Um, and so we started looking into SEO. And as we as we dug deeper into that, we kind of saw this space where um, more small, you know, entrepreneurial business owners kind of like us couldn't afford the big guys to pay SEO, you know, $5,000 a month and up. And so we kind of saw this hole there. And so what we decided to do then was make a business of that and create these do-it-yourself SEO tools because they were free tools all over the place. And so we decided to put it all in one system and to make it, you know, a tool set with a bunch of reports and things that would let just the average, you know, website owner be able to do something themselves. So that was 05. What have you scaled to today in terms of total customers using you? Yeah. So, you know, it started slow, of course, but um, we've, we're now over 200,000 active customers. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's significant. So has most of that growth come from partnerships with the EIGs of the world? Yeah. Yeah. Most of that comes with, um, partnering with hosting companies. Um, but we, we do do a lot of direct customers as well. Yep. And I mean, am I doing the math right? If you have 200,000 paying customers at that ARPU we just talked about, I mean, you're North of 5 million a month. I mean, is that generally accurate? Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't see all the numbers. Uh, you know, the finance guy does that, but um, but yeah, you can do math. So well, <laughs> come, on. Let's say, come on, Michael, you're the CEO, you know, your freaking revenue numbers. That's like an easy number, not some complicated payback period equation. Yeah. So, so we, we do fine for ourselves. We, we, we keep our, our operation lean. We're, we're about, um, we only have about 12 employees total. So programmers and customer support, uh, what's nice with working with the hosting companies is that they handle some of the customer support before it comes to us. Yeah. I just want to make sure I get your your general size accurate. I mean, some people sometimes give me customer numbers and it's actually free and paid, right? So I'm just looking for paid customers and I can generally just, if that's the case, take that 200,000 number times 25 and I mean, you guys are at a $60 million run rate. That would be the math. Is that is that accurate? So yeah, the 200,000, those are all paid customers. Uh, and so some of them, you know, are are maybe on the cheaper side and, and some of the the, the you know, there's a, there's a revenue share with the hosting companies as well. Sure. And so there's some, you know, there's some numbers to, to fiddle with there, but yeah, I mean, but even if we go down to your minimum price at, at 20, 19, 20 bucks a month, that's still 4 million bucks a month in revenue. Even if you're paying these guys a 50 or 60 or even, even an 80% cut, it's still a healthy business for you. Yeah. 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 So, Great. so can you, are, are you able to, I mean, how did you land these kinds of partnerships with the big distribution channels because there's a lot of tools like this. Are you just a better BD guy than any of them? Um, you know, maybe. Um, I th the you know the the first one that we landed was um, with uh, so one of my business partners is Danny Ashworth and he uh, was he started Bluehost itself and then Bluehost got bought out and so the company that bought them out 
that was our that was our first uh, hosting company that we were in. This is Endurance okay. International Group. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did you do so the that, deal with Joe Barnhauer? Was he the guy that led it? Uh, I I don't think so. Okay. I was gonna say we've had Joe on. He was he's been the M and A guy there at EIG for years and years, and then just left after he helped with the Constant Contact acquisition. Oh, okay. I bet your yeah, buddy we, knows him. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so keep going on with the story there. Your, so your partner, Bluehost, sold to EIG. Yeah. So I mean, that was that was the start of of um, of you know that first hosting company, um, and so um, and so that that was you know um, where we got started, and, and we're working with um, you know a few others that were in trying to get more, of course, as Wait, we go sorry, along. Michael, I'm not, I'm not following there. So your, your partner sold his company to EIG and you said, that's where you started. What do, what do you mean? That's where you started. Did he leave well, the company? And then that's where we started with EIG. So he was no longer with, uh, you know, with EIG. And so he joined with us and that's, uh, that's where that, um, relationship with EIG started. And are you just in their mojo marketplace or do you have a deeper relationship with them that others don't have? So we're in their uh, in their reg flow. So um, so that that scales well for us because that's you know right where people are signing up. Yeah, it scales very very nicely. I've I've <laughs> had, I've interviewed other CEOs that have that have been tested in that registration flow. And if you can basically prove over a cohort size that you can add a dollar or even a dollar to average cart checkout size, it starts to get interesting, and they start to put you in more and more places where it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same reason why five hour energy is on the end cap right before you check out at every <laughs> register, right? Exactly. Yeah. High price point, very small square, you know, you know, whatever they call it, retail space taken up, it works. Absolutely. All right. Yep. So so maybe what's interesting here, so I have interviewed a few people in this space, kind of domain space, domain tool yeah. space, where they are over aggressive in what they comp the channel partner. I'm talking like some of them will pay a hundred percent. Of, of revenue every single month. And then they have to figure out how to upsell those customers, other products to make their own money. How aggressive with you are, are you on the kickbacks you're paying to channels? So we've never had to be that aggressive. Um, we, we've done mostly 50, 50 or even 60 or 40, 60. Um, and, um, a lot of the hosting companies, they don't want us to upsell the customers cause they're, they're their customers. And so, um, you know, if, if they wanted less or if they wanted more then you know, we'd, we'd kind of have to side with that, but we haven't had to do that at this point. Okay. So is it fair to say if I ask you what your CAC is, I can just take your average price point and divide by two, assuming your majority cost on CAC is 50% to a partner. Um, sorry, I'm not following you there. That's okay. Yeah. So if someone signs up with you for 20 bucks a month and I ask you, what's it cost you to acquire that customer? Do you have any other costs besides a, a cut to the potential partner? Uh, with the hosting companies, no, uh, with our direct customers, you know, obviously there's, there's marketing and, you know, kind of that overhead, but, but with, with the hosting company, you know, it's, it's a, it's a split and, and they're of course finding the, the customers. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but I imagine most of your growth though is coming from those channel partners. If you have 200,000 yeah. customers. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So my, again, my, my question on those is, is it just, you know, if someone comes to you for 20 bucks a month, you're paying a kickback of 10 bucks a month to whoever brought you the customer. Are there any other costs in there associated with getting that customer besides the kickback? Um, there's not, Okay. not other than our own overhead, but yeah. 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 Well that, that would, yeah, that wouldn't necessarily be a CAC. That's maybe like, you're talking like SGNA stuff. Sure. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, so w tell me more in terms of how you've capitalized this business and grown it. It bootstrapped or have you raised capital? Uh, we bootstrapped actually. Okay. Yep. That, so that's great. Why do you, why do you say actually on the end? Do you, you just assume everyone raises these days? Well, I do assume that because <laughs> it seems like everyone does, but, but yeah, we, we bootstrapped it from the, from the start. So yep. And I, I'm a programmer myself. So I, I built, uh, you know, the first, you know, several versions of Solo SEO mostly by myself. And then as we've grown, of course, we've, we've hired more programmers and, and done more than that. So, and there's you, there's the guy you brought in from EIG. Uh, is there, are there any other co-founders or just you two? So Aaron Stewart is, uh, oh, yeah, he Aaron. and I original co-founders co and then, and then Danny came in. Yep. Okay. But do you think you guys, I imagine think of Danny like a co-founder, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So three of you guys, and there's an additional, what, nine people on the team or additional 12 people on the team? 
Yeah, an additional nine people on the team. Okay, they're in Seattle. Very cool. Um, so, by the way, I love one of the things I like to calculate is revenue per employee. You guys are going to be giving the current leader, which is Fileboard, a run for their money if you've got 12 <laughs> employees doing four million bucks a month in revenue. Uh, so, congrats on that. It's a su- it sounds like a super efficient operation. We're trying. <laughs> how have you resisted the urge to grow expense? I know, I know this is going to sound stupid, but how have you resisted the urge to grow expenses? Um, well, I, I, I mean, I think Aaron and I have, you know, we started back in 2005 together and we've always been bootstrappers. I mean, even before that, when we started things. And so we've always wanted to just keep everything lean. And, uh, I'm, you know, myself kind of just a minimalist guy. And so anything I can do lean, I will. And so I guess that kind of runs through the culture of our company. Even being that lean, have you been able to drive good growth? I mean, what, what has your growth been over the past 12 months, would you say? Um, so, uh, I, I guess I, I don't have any specific numbers for you, but, um, you know, our growth, our growth is happening, uh, it's, it's probably slower right now that we've, you know, we've, we've acquired several partnerships and such. Um, and we're, we're always working for new partnerships, but it has been a little bit, um, slow in the last year in terms of adding more partnerships. Uh, Sorry, in terms of growth of growing your, your revenue, your 200,000 customers, are you general, I mean, are you doubling year over year when you think back 13 months ago, were you doing 2 million then and you're 4 million now? I mean, do you have a general sense of that? Um, so honestly, I, I don't have any specific numbers for you. So I, I, I can't just throw those out, unfortunately, but, um, the, you know, Michael, way- people are going to like, hey, cause we have about <laughs> 5 million people who listen. They're gonna, they're gonna hit you pretty hard on Twitter. They're gonna, how's a founder not know if they're <laughs> growing or not? Well, I do know we're growing in. and the, the way that the, um, you know, working with the hosting companies, uh, and with, you know, even our direct customers, you know, um, we have most of our customers on a yearly plan. And so, you know, year after year, uh, those customers are, you know, resus- resubscribing. And so, um, so there's, there's some automatic growth kind of built into, you know, the, uh, the way that the business is built. Well, that's not growth um, though, Michael, if people resubscribe, that's staying flat. You then have to add people on top of that to have growth. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and, but then, and then the, the growth is then, from all the new signups that we're getting, you know, month after month. And That's so, right. Uh, so, you know, we are, we are growing. I, I, you, just, I you just don't know don't what the have, number is. I just don't have any numbers for you. Do I'm you have sorry. any, I mean, you must have some sense. I mean, it might not be exact number, but do you do generally know if you've doubled over the past year or you're flat over the past year or you have literally no uh, clue? Well, over the, over the past year, we've grown probably between two and 5% is, is, okay. is what I would say. Yep. Okay. So that's pretty, I mean, that's, that's not monthly, right? That's annually. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's, I, I love that you're bootstrapped and you're doing it, but many, many companies who are, have raised will go, oh my gosh, we would get killed if we only grew up 5% because they have to like double every year. But you guys right. have full control of the company. It's a right. great place to be. There's cash flow with two to 5% consistent year over year growth. And you're totally happy with that. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we get happier as we make new partnerships and get new customers, but yeah, exactly. What talk to me about churn, uh, churn is typically tough, especially in the SMB space. What's your churn look like? Um, so, uh, maybe, maybe it'd be a little bit more specific of what, of what you're actually looking for. Well, so ch- I mean, churn, right? Which is a pretty typical SaaS metric, which is just how many customers are you losing? Are they sticking with you once they sign up? Yeah. So, um, so we, for, in terms of renewals, we're somewhere around 65 and 70% of, of those renewals. And so they stick around, they stick around for a long time. Yeah. And a lot of that, a lot of, a lot of that, you know, if they're a hosting company, it's, if they end hosting, then they end with us. Um, but you know, but other than that, the customers that, um, are with us directly, it's, it's, um, usually about 55 to 60%. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so look, if you're, if you're retaining 60, 70% every year, it means you're churning 40 to, you know, 30 to 40%. They'll stick with you for a minimum two years at 20 bucks a month, right? That's pretty, I mean, that's, what is that? 240 bucks and no more than that, 480 bucks in lifetime value. That's pretty healthy. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, I mean, 
if I'm EIG and I'm seeing how much I'm growing your business, I'm going, well, it makes total sense to just buy these guys and take the other 50% <laughs> that they're keeping, right? They're only giving us 50%. I mean, why haven't you sold the EIG? Yeah, and that's a really good question. <laughs> so we, we, we obviously haven't, um, but, uh, but, you know. Break it down for me. Obviously, you can't say what you're actually doing, but break down the pros and the cons because it seems totally, I mean, probably makes, it makes total sense to me. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't know where, where they're at as a company. Um, you know, but, um, for, for us, you know, we, we like having the control, we like having the opportunity and the, and the upside to it. Um, but of course, if we had an offer for something, you know, you know, who would say no to a good offer? So, yeah. I mean, how do you think about though, what a good offer is? I mean, I imagine this is a business that's pumping out cash flow for you guys, the three founders, and maybe have a, a, a revenue share plan with the team. But I mean, how do you think about what a good offer would be? Um, I mean, I, what's your decision tree look like? You're an engineer. I'm sure you have a decision tree for this kind of thing. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a, a formal decision tree for that. Right, you're married, right? I am. Yep. Let me ask it this way. If you're doing 4 million bucks a month right now, now gross, it sounds like you're probably doing half that because you have a hard cost of 50% to the channel partners. So call it 2 million, right? Uh, it, or, or 48 million annually. Let's say, let's say EIG offered you 2X that. So let's say 100 million bucks. If you had to sit down at a dinner table tonight with your kids and your wife and say, guys, honey, I just turned down a hundred million dollar acquisition offer. Do they kill you? <laughs> probably. <laughs> okay. So hundred million is your number then. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I am serious. So I'm being kind of funny, but I am actually serious how you, how you and your founders would consider offers with something that's so profitable. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it would, it would come down to, you know, if that's a good offer or not. I, yeah, but Michael, you understand why that's not helpful for anyone listening, right? No one understands what that means. I'm <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not more helpful. <laughs> well, like, treat yourself like an algorithm. The only reason an algorithm gets smarter is by understanding its inputs. So for, for you to get a great outcome, what inputs are, like, are you feeding into your brain to figure out, doo -doo 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 -doo, is this great or not? Yeah, I mean, I mean, part of it would be, you know, if, if us as partners were were ready to to move on to something else, and that that was enough to, you know, to put us past that, um, you know, I, th I I think it I I don't think it's a it's a it would be overly complicated. I think it's just that you know the offer hasn't come. So. Yeah, yeah. So you're not in acquisition talks right now with anybody. No. Yeah. Interesting. If, can, would you ever consider raising capital? Um. Uh, yeah, if the right partner came in with, you know, with 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 something that would, you know, give a, you know, take us to the next level. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's wrap up here Michael with the famous 5. The first one, what is the last book that you read? The last book that I read, um so I've been reading this book uh called Actionable Gamification. So, I've been really interested in just the concept of gamification uh kind of as, you know, on the business side, personal side, it kind of applies everywhere. Uh, it's by Yukai Chow. Good. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, not, not necessarily. Um, I, you know, I was, I read last year, uh, the Zappos book, uh, Delivering Happiness by, uh, Tony Shea. Um, I, so, I mean, if I would pick one, that would be it. Number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Um, you know, it's kind of simplistic, but I like Google Docs and Google Sheets. We just use them all over the place. It's something really simple, but they're super useful. And number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, four to six would be. Ooh, okay. And, and what's the situation? Married, kiddos, how many? I've, I've got four kids. So four. I, I do a lot at home. So I, I kind of, kind of skip on the sleep a little bit. And how old are you, Michael? I'm 38. Okay. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, probably, um, probably focus on one thing. You know, when I, when I started out as an entrepreneur, I was kind of like doing a bunch of things. And so I would probably say, try to focus on one thing. 
Solo SEO founder, Michael, he says he would have focused on one thing. Launched his company back in 2005 and has resisted the urge to raise or sell with his partner, Aaron, and their third partner coming out of EIG after he sold Bluehost to them. Uh, the company is now serving over 200,000 customers. They've amassed that amount of customers, mainly relying on channel partnerships with hosting companies. Each of those customers pay on average 20 bucks per month at a minimum, so about 4 million bucks per month there in revenue or about 50 million bucks annually. Obviously, a big cost is the cut back to the channel partners, but still healthy. 30% logo churn annually, maybe up to 40%, depending on the cohort. Healthy LTV at about $480. Super, super high revenue per employee, which I love. They've done all this very efficiently with a team of 12, totally bootstrapped up there in Seattle. Michael, thank you for taking us to the top. Hey, thank you.